Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today is January 15th, 2023, and we're going to continue our reading of the coup d'etat, the assassination of JFK, JFK trading cards put out by Eclipse Comics in 1989. We've done two other live streams where we read cards 1 to 12 in one live stream, the first live stream, and we read cards um, 13 to 24 in the second live stream which we did last week actually so it's been it's actually taken about a year for us to go through this thing and we're going to read through the rest of the cards which is cards number 25 to number um, 36 in this set as well okay finish it off now initially i had only bought this set this is the original set that came out in 19 1990 i believe actually it was 1990 or 91 19 where's the copyright on this came out in 1990 so it came out in 1990 this set okay and then um uh, oliver stone put out his movie jfk right and there was some additional information that was released uh, revealed and eclipse comics the people that put this card together they came out and they released a revised edition based on some of the information that Oliver Stone shared in the JFK movie that he put out and the documents that they released at the time as well. So there's a revised edition that came out in, and the revised edition came out in, well, this is 1990, but it's not. It's 1991, the re, 1992, the revised edition. So 1990, first edition, Oliver Stone's JFK comes out in 1991. They go back and release a revised edition in 1992 okay now what we did previously i'm going to put the boxes here what we did previously the first 12 cars we just had this set so we read them okay the next 12 we overlapped it with the revised edition to see what we knew so we read all the way to card number 20 card number 24 okay and a couple of the cars we ended up reading the revised edition because there was additional information out there so i'm going to put these guys here okay we're going to put the box here sort of out of view of the camera and i'm going to pull out all the way up to card number 24 in this as well and i'm going to put it in the revised box because i don't want to mix these guys up Let's put this here. Let's put this here. Okay. Let's lay out these cards. Oh, here's this guy. Okay. Let's lay out these cards. So there's 12 cards here. I'm going to pull out. I'm going to read. Okay. And. Let's lay our stuff out nicely. Okay, gang. 1990, 1992, in the middle is Oliver Stone's uh, JFK movie that came out in 1991. Revised edition, original edition. Let's bring him out. Let's bring him out. Card number. 25 oil money who is this guy let's get this focused oil money and beautiful artwork beautiful artwork right absolutely phenomenal artwork oil money absolutely beautiful let's look at the text and the artwork was the artwork was done by legend comic book legend bill sin sin kowalski z I, I don't know how to pronounce that uh, my apologies to bill uh i'm horrendous with names and these names throw me off 
So let's take a look at this. See if we can get this focused. Ooh. Come on. Okay, let's see. There we go. So in 1963, there's a paragraphs breaks. Uh, they ended up adding them in the revised edition. So upcoming trip, let's see if we can find, there's upcoming trip here. And then after, hours after the assassination, so it looks like the same paragraph begins. It goes to 1963, November 21st, 1963. So it doesn't look like anything's changed there. That's the same. Another son, another son. And then we have a Y F board, the Y F board and ends with that. So it looks like the revised edition is the same as the original edition. So we're going to read the original edition. Okay. So card number 25 oil money. And the title is the name is still the same as well. Okay. So car 25 Haroldson Lafayette Hunt. In 1963, Dallas was a mecca for the ultra right, and H.L. Hunt was their godfather. An oil billionaire, Hunt supported right wing causes such as the John Birch Society, William F. Uh, Buckley's Young Americans for Freedom, YAF, Y A F, the political campaign of Senator Joseph McCarthy and the tax tax exempt news organization uh, facts forum and lifeline on november 4th 1963 hunt security security chief chief an ex-fbi agent wrote hunt a memo on quote reports of possible violence end quote during kennedy's upcoming trip hours after the assassination the fbi told hunt to go into hiding and for several weeks provided him with security years later hunt's personal aide alleged hunt knew of the plot having unwittingly influenced his right-wing followers to conspire to kill kennedy he added that hunt had sent him to check on oswald's security security in police custody though hunt and jack ruby claimed not to know each other a reliable witness alleged he and Ruby had won a considerable amount of money from Hunt in in uh, in in in, ver in veteran gambler waging on football games. Among Ruby's effects was the phone number of H. L. Son, Lamar Hunt, whose offices ruby visited on november 21st 1963. another son nelson bunker hunt sat on the board of the anti-communist international committee for the defense of christian culture led by a former nazi who a burr agent nazi burr agent and was a major backer of yaf bunker helped buy an ad placed by yaf's future executive secretary in the dallas morning news the day of kennedy's visit portraying the president as a kremlin dupe texas senator john tower a yaf board member personally interceded in 1962 with the immigration of naturalization and naturalization service in the case of maria oswald wow and Marina Oswald was uh, Oswald's uh, uh, wife, right? It was Oswald's wife, right? We read in uh, previous uh, previous cards. Cool. I didn't know about this guy, Hunt. I wonder if his well, I'm pretty sure his sons are pretty much would still be in the game right now or what this family is doing cool cool let's put these in their respective boxes card number 26 
card number 26. The policeman's pimp. Oh, what's this about? I wonder who the two ladies are. Is that what it implies? Ladies of the night? Prostitutes? Maybe. Beautiful artwork. Look at that. Just magnificent. It's the color scheme on it. Wow. The policeman's pimp. Cool. Let's take a look at the writing. Jack Ruby. This is Jack Ruby. Look at this. This is Jack Ruby. Wow. Jack Ruby. Let's look at the text. Let's look at the text. Let's make sure the text is, uh, if it's different, we'll read them. So from his days, yeah, same. Ruby Sellers, yeah. His pals, yeah. On June 7th, yeah. That's the same. Richard Nixon. What have we got? Richard Nixon, yeah. And it ends with conspiracy. Okay, cool. So the revised edition looks like it's the same as the original. So let's read card number 26. Policeman's Pimp. Jack Ruby. From his days as Sparky Rubenstein, errand boy for Al Al Capone to his ownership of a string of Dallas nightclubs where policemen got professional treatment. Ruby was, quote, one of our boys, end quote, according to the mobster Johnny Rossili, with whom Ruby met twice during the month prior to the assassination. Other gangster friends of Ruby's included Joe Cibalo, Dallas Mafia chief Barney Baker, Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa's 375-pound bodyguard, and Dave Yaras, hitman for Chicago mob boss Sam Gianchana, Gianchana, known as the guy who could, quote, fix it, uh, end quote, with the police. Ruby counted at least 100 Dallas cops among his pals. Ruby's self-professed idol was Louis J. Uh, McWilly, a professional gambler who worked at the mob-owned tri uh, Tripeca Hotel in Havana. In 1959, Ruby visited McWilly, and the two met with crime boss Santonos Traficana Cante Jr., then in, in a Cuban prison. Shortly after Ruby's return to Dallas, Traficante, tra Traficante was released. The House Select Committee on, As on Assassinations suspected Ruby, acting as a uh, gangland courier, had bought Traficante's freedom. During the six freedom during the six month period that included his Havana trip, the FBI interviewed Ruby eight times as a quote potential criminal informant end quote for ruby this was not a first in 1947 while still in chicago he quote performed information functions end quote for the staff of then congressman richard nixon we got a nixon connection on june 7th 1964 ruby told the warren commission his Life was in danger, in quotes. Gentlemen, he said, if we want to hear further testimony, you will have to get me to Washington soon. I want to tell the truth, and I can't tell it here, end quote. Before he died, he smuggled two letters out of prison, which hint darkly that Lyndon Johnson was behind the conspiracy. Wow, wow, wow. Interesting. Interesting. 
interesting. Hooked up with Richard Nixon as well, eh? Crazy. Card 26. Let's take a look at card number 27. Card number 27. The French Connection. The French Connection. Who's this guy? What is the French Connection? Whoop. Let's see if we can get this thing focused. Who is this guy? Mesmerizing, eh? Mesmerizing artwork. Jean Sutri. Jean Jean Sutri. Jean Sutri. Let's check this out. What do we got? After Kennedy's death, same text. Canada, Mexico or to Canada. Wow, well, okay. When Jack Ruby, cool. And then William Harvey, we got at the bottom. Is Jean, yeah. Oh, a little bit of text difference there. Something, Jean. Oh, it changes a little bit. We're going to read the revised version. Okay. Just because some wording might be more important. So this is the original version released in 1990. This is the revised version released after all the Stones movie from 1991. This was released in 1992. So let's read card number 27. Oh God. Jean Sutri. After Kennedy's death, French intelligence asked the FBI to help locate Jean Sutri, a French secret army organization oas terrorists previously jailed for attempting to kill french president charles de gaulle according to a cia document dated april 1st 1964 which surfaced in 1977 the french claim sutri was in dallas on november 22nd 1963 and was expelled by u.s authorities 18 hours later concerned with security to the Gaul's upcoming Mexican visit. They wanted to know whether he had been sent to Mexico or to Canada. When Jack Ruby was jailed for killing Lee Oswald, his lawyer asked him if he knew anyone who could uh, damage his defense. Ruby mentioned Thomas Ellie Davis III, with whom he had uh, run guns and jeeps to Cuba. In 1963, Davis, while on prohibition for bank robbery, obtained the U.S. passport. By December, he was in uh, Tangiers jail, charged with running guns to, to the OAS. According to the FBI, Macron author uh, Moroccan authorities intercepted a letter from Davis that referred to Lee Oswald and the assassination. Davis was apparently released from jail through the efforts of a mysterious CIA agent codenamed QJ Win W I N, described as a foreign national with mafia connections who was recruited for the ZR rifle team, a CIA assassination unit run by ex-FBI agent and Cuban exile handler William Harvey. Something Jean Sutri was QJ WIN win, in part because OAS terrorists were involved in heroin trafficking and in 1963 the main American distributor of French heroin was the Lucky Luciano Syndicate run by 
Meyer Lansky and Tampa Mafia boss Santos Trificante Jr., formerly of Havana, who was William Harvey's partner in the CIA Mafia plot to murder Fidel Castro. Wow. So many connections. Crazy. Crazy. The French connection. Always a cigarette in their hands. Card number twenty eight. The mob. The mob. Let's check out the mob. The mob Rossellini Trafacanti Giancana Giancana The mob Look at those faces, look at the sunglasses. Whoop. CIA Mafia Plots. Let's check it out. Let's see if the text is the same. So in the last month, yeah, mob. Okay, so there's a paragraph break. We're looking for, what are we looking for? The Kennedy brothers, mob members. Da, 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 da. Hmm. I don't see that. Looks like these end differently, gang. Yeah, looks like this was reworded. The revised edition looks to be majorly reworded relative to the original edition, right? So we're going to read the revised edition, gang. Let's read the revised edition. Let's read the revised edition. The mob. There's going to be a lot of names in this that I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Card number 28, CIA Mafia Plots. In the last month of the Eisenhower administration, secret meetings uh, mediated by ex-FBI agent and Howard Hughes aide Robert M Mahu were held between uh, CIA agents and mafia figures for the purpose of plotting to kill Fidel Castro. In 1960, the Cuban leader had nationalized U.S. corporation corporate interests, closed casinos, shut down drug labs, and deported mob members. The Kennedy brothers did not know about the CIA Mafia anti-Castro plots until 1962 when Robert Kennedy found the CIA interfering in Justice Department prosecution of the first mobster contacted, uh, contacted by Mahu. Chicago boss Sam Gian, Giancana participation in CIA Mafia plots wasn't uh, Giancana's only protection against prosecution. His girlfriend, Judith Campbell, and President Kennedy had been lovers for two years. In 1963, the Justice Department ordered the FBI to curtail surveillance of Giancana. Judith Campbell, wow, who's that? The gangster with the most to gain from the elimination of Castro was Santos Trafacante Tra Jr., former uh, mafia boss of Havana, who with his partner, casino developer and mob financial wizard, Meyer Lansky, had inherited Lucky Luciano's international heroin operation. Trafacante financed terrorist raids in against Cuba run by CIA agent Frank 
Sturgis. Sturgis is Miami-based International Anti-Communist Brigade. In 1962, Trafacante told Cuban exile and FBI informant Jose Alman, quote, Kennedy is, a, is in trouble and he will get what, he, what is coming to him. Kennedy is not going to make it to the election. He's going to be hit, end quote. West Coast mobster Johnny Rossellini, another CIA mafia plotter, later alleged Castro was warned of plans to kill him by a double agent, possibly Trafacante, and that Castro, assuming the plots were official U.S. policy, killed Kennedy in retaliation. Wow. That part we know is not true. Right? And who was claiming this? West Coast mobster, another CIA mafia, later alleged, yeah, West Coast mobster alleged. Crazy, crazy. The mob, the mob, the mob, which is really CIA mafia, right? CIA mafia. Cool. Card number 28. Card number 29. Oh, this is Robert Kennedy. Bob Kennedy. This was sad. Future targets or future target. Right. The brains the brains I'm pretty sure this is who it is yeah Robert Kennedy many people say Robert Kennedy was the brains behind John Kennedy right man I would I would I would pay an arm and a leg to have this portrait the original my god what beauty look at this look at this absolutely amazing the depth of this painting the depth of this painting i got a feeling this might have been revised a lot let's check it out when when we got security risk security risk although robert kennedy we got that thing going there look out look out card look out card same while robert yeah and then robert left this post four years later let's check it out robert left this post four years later there's a paragraph break right there and cover up it looks like it's about the same it is the same so we're going to read the original card number 29 when robert kennedy became attorney general in 1961 he found fbi chief j edgar hoover uncooperative with his anti-crime campaign so he formed his own intelligence unit initiating massive illegal wiretap operations against james hoffa carlos mancillo and other mobsters and political enemies such as the State Department security uh, evaluator Otto Otek, Otepka, who had rejected several Kennedy appointments as sec uh, security risks. Although Robert Kennedy had once worked for Senator John McCarthy, an Ot Otepka is assisted the McCarthy inspired Senate subcommittee of internal security in mid 1963 Otepka was suddenly moved to a less sensitive post and his safe was drilled open inside was found uh, a study on American defectors to the USSR including Re Lee Halvey Oswald on whom 
Otepka had failed to issue a State Department lookout card, in quotes. While Robert may have suspected conspiracy in his brother's death, he never publicly challenged the FBI's findings. Meanwhile, Hoover removed his private phone link to the Attorney General and did not speak to him for the next six months, after which Robert left his post. Four years later, on the verge of capturing the Democratic nomination for the 1968 presidential race, Robert was killed by another alleged lone nut, Sirhan Sirhan. He may have taken to his grave the secret of his brother's missing brain, which was removed along with photos of 119 slides of tissue sections, section from the autopsy materials before 1967 probably on orders from Robert himself, according to the H HSCA. Did he take this evidence into safekeeping because in he intended, once he became president, to reveal a conspiracy cover-up? Oh, good question, good question. Good question, good question. Robert Kennedy. Robert Kennedy card number 30 what a card what a card goddess what a card what a card my god look at this let's see if we can zoom into the eyes of course let's take a look let's take a look John Kennedy affair we got John and Marilyn right there paragraph ends interested parties and then John and Marilyn oh it looks like this paragraph ends differently Look at that. Yeah, and the last paragraph seems to be the same, but the middle paragraph ends differently. So we're going to read the revised version, gang. We're going to read the revised version. This is an important card. Card number 30, Marilyn Monroe. John Kennedy's affair with CIA agent Cord Meyer's wife, Mary, led him to experiment with marijuana and LSD. But the most famous of the 32 presidential uh, oh, paramour, paramour, paramours tallied by J. Edgar Hoover was actress Marilyn Monroe, who was also the lover of Robert Kennedy. Her August 5th, 1962 death, ruled suicide, was linked to these dangerous liaisons, which had been observed by several interested parties. That paragraph is insane. Let's read that again. Card number 30, Marilyn Monroe. John Kennedy's affair with CIA agent Cord Meyer's wife, Mary, led him to experiment with marijuana and LSD. But the most famous of the 32 presidential parameters, tallied by J.F. J. Edgar Hoover, was actress Marilyn Monroe, 
who was also the lover of Robert Kennedy. Her August 5, 1962 death, ruled suicide, was linked to these dangerous liaisons, which had been observed by several interested parties. John and Marilyn often met in the home of the presidential uh, president's brother-in-law, Peter Lawford, whose house had been wired during the 1960 campaign by GOP consultants, in quotes. M uh, Monroe's home was bugged for, uh, for wireman Bernard Spindle, whose usual employer was Jimmy Hoffa. The Monroe tapes haven't been made public, but according to many accounts, they con contain intimacies with the Kennedys, pro-Castro arguments, and support for ousting J. Edgar Hoover. Most significantly, they recorded a visit from Robert on the day of Monroe's death, during which the pair argued heatedly. She left, she left, she felt she had been used and dumped by both Kennedys. Knowledge of this last visit would have been a powerful blackmail tool against Robert. One person who acquired leverage as a result of the ta tragedy was Hoover, who immediately confiscated Monroe's phone records on Robert's orders. Hoover was hardly a uh, disinterested party. He considered Monroe a security risk and had watched her for years because of her friendship with a communist, in quote. Her uh, volum voluminous, voluminous FBI files are mostly classified, but it is said they re uh, rec record sex orgies attended by John Robert, L.A. Police Chief William Parker, and various women, and state she was pregnant by Robert and had had an abortion before she died. Elder God has a definition for us. Palamers, a lover, especially the illicit partner of a married person. Marilyn Monroe. Would you like to be a fly on the wall? Card number 31. Card number 31. Among the missing, hmm, what is this about? Among the missing, Giant Stadium, number 82. Not sure what that signifies. And then there's 70 in the background. Among the missing, James Hoffa. James Hoffa. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. Let's see what the text is like. So Robert Kennedy, that's legit, starts off the same. We got after the assassination. We got after the assassination. Has uh, got to go. Yeah, same. Under Hoffa, yeah, partner, same. What do we got? Locke became Lyndon. Locke became Lyndon Johnson. Yeah, it ends with the same. Yeah, the text looks to be the same. Okay, so we're going to read the original version. James Hoffa. Wow, wow, wow. Card number 31. Robert Kennedy had, pers had 
pursued Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa since the 1950s when he served as chief counsel for the Senate McClellan Committee, which exposed the role of organized crime in labor unions. On becoming Attorney General in 1961, Robert turned up the heat, and over the next few year, years, his, quote, Get Hoffa Squad, end quote, brought multiple indictments uh, in, 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 Indictments, indictments against Teamster officials. Indictments, it should be, isn't it? Against Teamster officials. By 1962, the pressure was intense, and a Teamster inform, informant quoted Hoffa as saying, quote, Somebody needs to bump that son of a bitch off. Bobby Kennedy has got to go. End quote. After the assassination, Hoffa told a reporter, quote, Bobby Kennedy is just another lawyer now, end quote. But despite his bravado, he was convicted of jury tampering in 1964 and sent to prison, where he remained until 1971, when President Nixon pardoned him. Wow. Under Hoffa, the Teamster Central States Pension Fund, S.C. CSPF was managed by Chicago gangster Alan Dorfman, who made low interest loans involving kickbacks to Las Vegas casino developers. Some uh, CSPF loans were political. In 1963, 25 million was lent to the firm of Webb and Knapp, financiers behind the Great Southwest Corporation a shady Texas land deal backed by the Murchison family and controlled by their lawyer, Bedford Wayne. With this loan, Webb and Knapp bought 625,000 shares of overvalued real estate stock from a company run by Texas Democratic Party Chairman Eugene Locke, in whose official uh, offices the fateful Dal Dallas motorcade route was planned. Oh my God. Locke became Lyndon Johnson's ambassador to Vietnam in 1967 to, to, to 68. Webb and Knapp went bankrupt in 1965. Hoffa vanished in 1975. And rumors persist that the mob killed him and buried his bodies in New Jersey's Meadows Land Stadium. Wow. That's why. That's why. That's why we got the giant stadium. That's why we got the giant stadium. Among the missing touchdown is Hoffa buried right there. Is that what it is? Do I have my stadium in the right place in New Jersey? Is that what we got? Is that where they play? New Jersey's Meadowsland Stadium? Is that it? Wow. Card number 32. Card number 32. Mafia Kingfish. Who is this? Mafia Kingfish. Kingfish, what a trippy portrait! What a trippy portrait! Carlos Marcelo. Marcello, Carlos Marcello. Oh yeah, let's check out the text. Let's see if the same. Let's check out the text. Let's see. New Orleans Mafia. Yeah, 
you got sixteen hundred dollars a month yeah in 1961 okay what have we got Lee Oswald Lee Oswald let's find Lee Oswald and then kill the president kill the president where are we huh kill the president this one says but Oswald would have been a poor so that looks to be the same Marcello 1964 1994 okay we're going to read the original because it's the same it's just the one word changed but uh, instead of Lee Hollywood's word would have been poor you know what let's read the let's read the revised version of this one okay let's read the revised version mafia kingfish card number 32 carlos marcello new orleans mafia don carlos marcello born Cal calogiro minocor was a protege of new york uh, mob boss frank costello in 1963, Marcello ran a multi-million dollar crime em empire spread over several states. Yet New Orleans FBI agent Regis Kennedy stated he was a tomato salesman who earned $1,600 a month. <laughs> what the hell? In 1961, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, aware that Marcello uh, Marcello held only a questionable uh, Guatemalan passport had him abduct, abducted flown to Guatem Guat uh, Guatemala City an un and unceremoniously dumped after sneaking back to the US via Miami Marcello Marcello was heard making threats against Robert Kennedy a Marcello uh, associate told the HSCA that in 1962, Marcello had said, quote, don't worry about that little Bobby son of a bitch. He's going to be taken care of, end quote. He also reportedly spoke of using a nut, in quotes, uh, someone who uh, couldn't be traced back to him to kill the president. Lee Oswald would have been a poor untraceable nut in quotes for Marcello uh, to use because his uncle and surrogate father Dots Moret was a bookie for Marcello Lu Marcello Lieutenant Nofio Pecora furthermore Oswald's associate David Ferry had helped plan legal strategy for Marcello's deportation hearings and was with him in court the morning of the assassination Marcello also had strong ties to Jack Ruby's friend Dallas Mafia chief Joe uh, Cervello Marcello's uh, operations benefited greatly from the uh, la largest largest of Mafia's Teamster pension funds in 1965 to 67 with help from lobbyist Irving Davidson and one million dollars donated by his mob friend Marcello spearheaded the quote save Havana end quote movement later to become the spring spring Hoffa in quote movement currently serving time for wire and mail fraud and reportedly suffering from Alzheimer's disease he is due to be released in 1994 wow 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 he's long gone long gone mafia kingfish Carlos Marcello card number 33 the arranger look at this look at this 
the arranger who is this guy who is this guy this guy's face doesn't ring a bell to me Let's check out the text. I Irving Davidson. I Irving Davidson. Let's check out the text. I Irving Davidson. Registered. Yeah, it starts the same. First paragraph is the same. Through Hoffa, same. West Corporation, same. Clint, yeah, same. Okay, they look to be the same. So let's read card number 33. I, Irving Davidson, a registered Washington lobbyist for the Teamsters and a friend of Jimmy Hoffa, I, Irving Davidson, had a vast international network of powerful connections and called himself, quote, the grease for the machinery end quote his business card read quote door opener and arranger end quote what a great title for a business card door opener and arranger among his seemingly diverse clients were the cia coca-cola fidel castro the family dictatorships of nicaragua uh, the somosas the dominican republic the through Hilos and Haiti, the Duvaliers, the oil rich Mur Murchison family of Dallas, and mafioso Carlos Mar Marcello. The, the, close, the close 20 year relationship between Davidson and Marcello ended in 1981 when the two were indicted, in, indicted, indi indicted in the wire and mail fraud case that finally snared Marcello. Davidson's acqu acquittal and the fact that he had introduced Marcello to the government sting operator who caught them suggests that he set up his mafia friend. Through Hoffa, Davidson arranged the Teamster pension uh, fund loan for the Merchantsons who shared with uh, David Davidson, a close mutual friend, J. Edgar Hoover. Davidson arranged another deal for the Merchantsons that resulted in a large, lar large payoff to then Senator Lyndon Johnson's close aide and bagman, Bobby Baker. Part of part of Baker Johnson set was bedford wayne whose law firm represented represented george the murren Schitts and the Merchantsons and controlled the great south west corporation clint Merchantson senior liked to gamble and frequented the four deuces club where he played high stakes poker with fellow gambler like H. L. Hunt, Sam Rayburn, and Lyndon Johnson. The club's owner, W. C. Kirkwood, a man with unquestionable access to Johnson, was a friend and former employer of Jack Ruby's idol, Louis J. McWilly. Just insane. Look at that smile. The arranger. Look at that smile. It arranges everything. Look at that. Dark. The arranger. The arranger. We know who this is. This is Hoover. Gotta be Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover. Look at that face. What a vile creature. The untouchable. Literally the untouchable. 
the untouchable I know a little bit about the history of this guy a vile creature look at this portrait what a absolutely brilliant brilliant portrait captures what this monster represented just look at him wow 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 <laughs> cheryl's commenting would have loved to have a hint of a shoulder strap showing with this yeah he was a cross dresser i think that's what cheryl was referring to what a portrait wow 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 let's check out the text let's check out the text fbi fbi hoover looks the same more power around more yeah marilensky yeah looks the same private yeah uh, Jim Rowley, the true nature of FBI, yeah, and it ends the same. We're gonna read the original. Okay, let's read the original. Look at this. Look at this. Card number thirty-four. J. Edgar Hoover. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover hated the Kennedys and refused to cooperate with their crackdown of organized crime because, according to him, organized crime didn't exist. Yet he spent his vacations gambling at Del Mar Racetrack and relaxing at the Del Charo Motel, notorious hangouts for top-level mobsters, and both owned by his pals, the Texas Merchantsons, and is off and he often met privately with mafia prime minister frank castello and has been alleged that hoover had a secret hit squad of mob assassins recruited with castello's help the day after kennedy died the fbi taped gangster charlie ingles telling his boss sam jacan Canna, quote, two months from now, the FBI will be like it was five years ago. They won't be around no more, end quote. Hoover's power resided in his confidential files. During the Warren Commission investigation, for instance, he collected derogatory materials on commissioner members and their staff. He also investigated the sex lives of prominent people, particularly homosexuals, but ironically, it is rumored that Hoover's own alleged sexuality, homosexuality may have subjected him to blackmail by gangster Meyer, Meyer Lansky. Private corporations, government, and media were infiltrated by ex-FBI agents who, while no longer on the payroll, remained loyal to Hoover. This may shed light on the true roles, roles of ex-FBI agents like Guy Bannister, William Harvey, Robert uh, Mahu, Jim Garrison, and Secret Service Chief James Rowley. The true nature of FBI links to Lee Oswald and Jack Ruby have never been revealed, but they certainly were ties between the FBI and both men and by controlling the investigation Hoover was in a position to obscure the trail of the assassins just imagine what the United States would have looked to look like now in 2023 if Hoover was not in charge for the amount of time that he was and if he was actually investigated and prosecuted for his crimes what a different world we would be living in right now what a monster what a monster right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
card number 35 card number 35 ballots and bullets ballots and bullets Ballots and bullets. Want to guess who that is? Want to guess who that is? I got a feeling that's Nixon. Is it Nixon? Or is it Lyndon Johnson? Lyndon Johnson. I thought they might bring in Nixon at some point. Lyndon Johnson. And if I recall correctly, he was uh, sworn in on a plane, right? With Jackie beside him with a little winking going on. Was it on a plane? Wow, how brilliant that is. Look at that. Let's look at the text. Let's look at the text. Let's see what we got. Lyndon Johnson, Lyndon Johnson, paragraphs insane, ballots, the two scandals, Johnson, yeah, yeah, legislator, yeah, let's see, there's a paragraph break here, CIA, huh, second I think that paragraph within hours okay this last paragraph seems a little different it ends the same but I think they're a little different we're gonna read the revised version gang let's read the revised version important Card number 35, Lyndon Johnson. Lyndon Johnson's political career was mired with corruption. In 1948, he got a local official to uh, certify 200 fake ballots, literally stealing the election to become U.S. Senator by 87 votes. In 1949, a TV newsman investigating Texas vote fraud was killed. In 1952, his assassin was found hanging in his jail cell after he offered to reveal the location of the missing fraudulent ballots. Two scandals rocked Johnson's vice president presidency. First was his link with Texas Wheeler dealer Billy Sol Este, who collected millions in federal agriculture subsidies for non-existent cotton farms. In 1985, Estate testified that Johnson had ordered the death of Henry Marshall, who had been investigating the scam. Then came the exposure of ties between Johnson A. Bobby Baker and Irving Davidson, the Mer Merchantsons, the Teamsters, and Carlos Marcello. Marcello. It was alleged that during the 1950s, Johnson Johnson received $500,000 in cash from Marcello, Marcello's racing wire, uh, racing wire and slot machine profits in return for killing anti-racketeering legislation. Johnson's longtime mistress, Madeline Brown, claimed he told her Kennedy's death was, quote, ordered by American oil men and the CIA end quote and he knew of it in advance his abrupt reversal of Kennedy's plan to bring America's Americans back from Vietnam has fueled speculation about his uh, complicity complicity 
in CIA military intelligence plot. Within hours of becoming president, Johnson made Texas officials halt his halt their inquiries and turn all evidence over to the FBI. As if to return the favor, J. Edgar Hoover promptly stopped FBI participation in Attorney General Kennedy's probe of Baker's mob ties. In January 1964, Johnson made Hoover FBI director for life. Later, his executive order 1162 locked all assassination evidence in the National Archives until the year 2039. Wow. Wow. Absolutely effing wow. 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 Card number 36. Silenced. Check this out. Silenced. Look at this amazing artwork. dead witnesses indeed dead witnesses this has got to be different than the original maybe let's see what we got let's see what we got in the first three in the first three is the same chronologically yeah 64 oh maybe it's the same look at this one this is the revised edition so the last card in this set is very much damaged but it looks like to be the same so we're going to read the original okay so this one's damaged in the revised edition okay so card number 36 dead witnesses in the first three years following the assassination 13 material witnesses died of unnatural causes other suspicious deaths occurred during both the Garrison trial in the late 1960s and the Congressional investigation of the mid-70s. Mid in all, more than 40 witnesses have died mysteriously, many because they knew too much. These include chronologically, these are the names, look at this, chronologically, a tribute to those that knew. 664 guy barrister apparent heart attack his files were gone by the time authorities arrived 964 cd jackson unknown causes life magazine publisher and longtime cia propagandist he purchased and suppressed the oh the Pruda film 165 dorothy kilgallen drug overdose the colonist had promised after meeting with jack ruby to break open open the kennedy case 167 jack ruby cancer just before his his appeal was to begin he told family members he had been injected with cancer cells 267 david ferry unspecified natural causes in quotation marks within hours his Cuban exile friend, El Eladio del Val, was shot through the heart and his head split open. 973. Thomas E. Davis III, electrocuted while stealing, stealing wire from a warehouse. 874. Clay Shaw, possible cancer, no, auto no autopsy performed. 6 1975 sam giancana shot once in the back 
of the head and six times in a circle around his mouth while under police protection what the 775 james hoffa vanished on his way to meet anthony provenzano a mob connected teamster official 776 johnny rossili uh garroted stabbed dismembered and found floating in an oil drum off the coast of florida after agreeing to testify to the senate 377 george the Mereshet, gunshot shot wound through the mouth ruled suicide on the day he was called to arrange an interview with the hsca dead witnesses dead witnesses silenced gang that's the JFK trading cards coup d'etat the assassination of JFK original version 1990 Revised version, 1992. I hope they blew you away as much as they did me. Wow, wow, wow. Just one little commentary I'll, I'll just put out. Just from these cards alone, the rot in US politics has been there for decades. Okay. It is not recent it has been there for decades which is why why we have needed accountability and transparency of capital as power which is why why we should work towards freeing Julian Assange because he's a publisher journalist that is being crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capital as power to humanity something that we have desperately needed in our societies for decades upon decades upon decades for more information see wikileaks.org defend.wikileaks.org or our julian assange and wikileaks playlist on censored